Your report, which we received today, demonstrates the impressive beginning of that positive change we had hoped to see and are proud of. Your report concludes that our government has made important strides on the road towards a transparent system based on democratic values. As the Bahraini king praises the government efforts in implementing the recommendations of the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry, we ask, is Bahrain on the path to real reform? And was the BICI aiming for a comprehensive or cosmetic change? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Darin Abu Gaida. Following the uprising in Bahrain, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ordered what he called an independent fact-finding commission. And that led to the release of a 500-page report in November last year. It included 9,000 testimonies and documented 46 deaths and 559 allegations of torture. It also outlined recommendations for the Bahraini government. On Tuesday, the National Commission met with the king to discuss the implementation of these recommendations. But while the government claimed that they have achieved 90 percent of what the report set out for them, the opposition says that figure is closer to 10 percent. Let's take a closer look at the findings and recommendations of the report, which included allegations of torture with electric shocks, beatings and threats of rape. It said the use of force against the protesters worsened the situation. The commission also demanded the government review all jail sentences issued by state security courts. As well as its findings, the report also outlined recommendations for the Bahraini government, which included the reinstatement of sacked employees and dismissed students, better training for Bahrain security forces, the rebuilding of places of worship dem demolished during the uprising, and to overturn the convictions following unfair trials of demonstrators, human rights defenders, as well as activists, and immediately release them. Well, the Bahraini government insists that most of the recommendations outlined in the report have been met. Necessary administrative and legal mechanisms have been put in place to implement the required plans in the medium and the long term. This has included security and judicial reform, enhancing educational curricula, establishing a detailed plan to reform the media, working tirelessly to ensure that employees are reinstated establishing compensation schemes to provide redress to the victims as soon as possible. We have also started programs for national social and economic reconciliation, establishing an independent ombudsman office at the Ministry of Interior. Most importantly, we have established a special investigation unit to hold accountable those that have erred during the events of last year. But the opposition refutes this claim. Speaking to Al Jazeera, Abdel Jalil Khalil from Al Wafaq National Islamic Society said that none of the high ranking officials who are responsible for the killing and torture of demonstrators have been put on trial or are even under investigation. He also said that while about 38 Shiite mosques were destroyed during the uprising, only five have been reconstructed. And no changes have been made to the legal system despite Tuesday's report. All right, before we bring in our panel of guests, let's speak to our correspondent, Mohamed Val, who's joining us on the telephone from the Bahraini capital, Manama. Mohamed, can you tell us of uh, the state of affairs in Bahrain this Tuesday after the session between the King and the National Commission? What's it like there and what have you seen in Bahrain? Yes, I can talk to you about what we have seen before the release of this report today and the efforts of the government vis-à-vis uh, -vis the international media trying to really show us that they have seriously changed the, changed the situation in Bahrain. They took us on a tour today uh, inside the, the Interior Ministry, and we've been shown some really very clean, apparently newly built and air-conditioned interrogation rooms with nice furniture, fresh painting, and with CCTV cameras, which they say have recently been put there to monitor any abuses that could be committed against detainees during interrogation sessions. There are nice rooms where detainees can meet with their lawyers in total privacy, lounges for visiting families. However, we were not allowed to go near any of the detention cells. Then they took us to the central jail of Bahrain, called also the Jaw Prison, with uh, 1,200 inmates serving various long and medium terms. No cameras or mobile phones were allowed, uh, but we've been given a lengthy illustration of the numerous 
improvements and good practices, which they say have now been implemented, uh, like free education, phone calls for families, uh, uh, rehabilitation, several sections also that we have seen for professional training in woodwork, carpentry, handicraft, painting. We, we were able even to approach prisoners and talk to them, and they told us, and they told us those we, we met told us their situation is fine. We understand this is a PR. Uh, some of this, I mean, we can talk only about what we have seen, but uh, we understand that there has been some selective selectivity in this. We have been shown only special places and not every, not allowed to go everywhere we want. We asked questions about political prisoners. They told us the officers uh, conducting the tour told us there are no political prisoners in Bahrain. And we asked about those who are on hunger strike, like uh, the opposition leader, Abdul Hadi Khawaja, and they said there is there are zero zero prisoners who are on hunger strike. We don't have any prisoners on hunger strike. But later on, during the questions that we've been putting, uh, he began to explain that uh, Al Khawaja is, is actually on hunger strike, and that the doctors are taking care of him on a daily basis. Mohammed, so the issue. The, yes. Uh, the issue, Mohammed, of uh, allowing access to visit detained human rights defenders and activists by not only local but international human rights organizations is, in fact, one of the recommendations that we will be talking about that was put forward in this BICI report. So from what you saw, whether in the interior ministry, in the jail or these detention centers, has anyone been given access from local or international organizations to people that are being held there? That's the question, because we, we, we personally asked our, as journalists to be allowed to see any of the high ranking of the high profile prisoners there, and we were denied access to those prisoners. And um, that's despite the fact that the main focus of the government now, according to what they tell us, is on the security aspects of the improvements and the reforms. Uh, they speak about uh, reforming the, the whole security apparatus. They say they reduce the intelligence, the role of the intelligence. Uh, the role of the security forces has now been reduced to intelligence gathering, and they do not contribute, they do not participate in interrogations and things like that or in, in physical punishment. The training is being provided, and they have brought special advisors from the UK and the United States. They speak about transparency measures taken, they speak about the dropping of all the charges related to the freedom of expression, and they speak of special funds to compensate uh, the victims of torture and abuse. But in terms of your specific questions about access to detainees, none of that has been has happened as far as I know. Mohammed Val joining us from Manama in Bahrain. Mohammed, thank you very much for that update. Let's bring in our guests in Manama, Jamal Fakhro. He's the deputy chairman of the Shura Council, Bahrain's upper house of parliament. In Doha, Michael Stevens, a researcher for the Royal United Services Institute. And over in London, Ali Al-Aswad, a former opposition MP and member of the Al-Wafaq National Islamic Society. Welcome to all of you, gentlemen, on this edition of Inside Story. It's good to have you with us. Jamal Fakhro, if I can start with you over in Bahrain. Your king says significant progress has been made on reforms and implementation of these reforms. Can you tell us where you feel that progress has been made? Well, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for having me on this program today to start with. Uh, His Majesty was referring to the, to the implementation of the recommendations of the Biki report. Uh, as you know, that report have got 26 recommendations written by Mr. Bassoon and his team. Uh, up, to the, up, to, uh, to, up to the date where we submitted the report today and up to, the, up to last week, uh, 15 of these recommendations have been fully implemented and there are 10 of them are being in the process of, of, of being implemented. As you know, there are a few recommendations which could be implemented by either uh, establishing a department or, or, or changing part of the regulations and so on and so off. And there are some of, of, of the recommendation which talks about changing laws, which would need to go through the, the upper house and, and lower house of the, of the National Assembly, and also would require a change for, for reconciliation, change in culture, change in education program, and so on and so forth, and really change on the way our, our media uh, is, is, is works in Bahrain. So these so recommendations to, have to, not to, been implemented. To, the ones that you refer to have not been implemented, you say, because it is a timing issue. Is that what yeah, I understand I, I from, I from your comment? Well, no, no, it, it's, exactly. It's only timing. No, they have been, we have started the implementation, or really the government have started the implementation, and there is a detailed report on at which stage they are. But when you talk about, about, about uh, 
uh, recommendation 1725, which, to, which, which speaks about reconciliation. Reconciliation is a long, is a long program. When you talk about changing culture within, within the police, that, is, that require education and require training and people development. When you talk about, about changing the, 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 the media, how the media uh, look to the, to, the, to, the, to the issues of Bahrain, that would require long, long, uh, long uh, change and long programs. We have, been up, we have appointed a couple of consultants to help, to help ministry, the, 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 the people at the, at the, uh, at the uh, uh, media so, uh, uh, ministry uh, to, to establish new laws and regulations. We have signed a couple of, of agreements between UNESCO and Ministry of Education to reform some, uh, some of the program at the, at, the, at the schools. But this will require a long time. I'll come now, back to the specific points question, of the recommendations. The end, I mean, today, our committee, the, the committee which was established 100 days ago to oversee the implementation, uh, is, is completed their, its role today and submitted the report. The question is who will be following up to ensure that the government implement those recommendations, those non-completed recommendations, and to continue apply the new rules as recommended. And it was a clear instruction by His Majesty the King in his speech. He said that the lower house, the, 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 the House of Representatives, will be responsible of overseeing that the government implement those recommendations. All right. So it is now back to the people of Bahrain via the House of, of, of Representatives to oversee that these remaining 10 recommendations need to be implemented as soon as possible. All right. I will come back to you so that we can talk about specific points in these recommendations uh, that some say actually have not been implemented. But let me go over to Ali Al-Aswad first in London. Ali, the government says uh, it's made significant progress. Is it right? What do you have to say to the comments uh, by uh, Jamal Fakhro? I would say if it goes to the people, the people, they raise it clearly on 9th of March. They said they want to step out the governments. The governments, they were responsible for torture. As I have seen today, the prime minister, he was not attending this uh, ceremony or, uh, I mean, or this uh, session. Uh, this means the governments, they are not interested to implement the recommendations. The torture is still ongoing. The mosque, which being demolished, which there are 38 mosques. Unfortunately, the head of the committee, he mentioned that there will be uh, only 12 of these mosques will be built again. Uh, the media, as Mr. Jamal, he mentioned now, it will take time. No, they didn't need to take time. The media, Bahrain TV, they could invite today, tonight, the main opposition parties to go to the local t TV and to express their opinion, to talk to the people in Bahrain about what is happening in the last or in the past year, about what's happening up to date. Come back to Mr. Mohammed. If you have seen that uh, uh, rooms with the cameras, this means the torture will happen outside these rooms. The governments, they will not be crazy to torture people inside these rooms, and they were recorded. And we didn't know where this record is goes. Okay. I mean, the Bahrain governments, they keep promising. Bahrain authorities, they keep promising. Since, at, I mean, a years and a years now, since ages, I would say here. Then they said that we started the reform in Bahrain at early uh, 2000s. There, will, there, there is no uh, political reforms. If I would say the recommendations was highlighted on the uh, human rights issues, still that we will have like, uh, I mean, a political reforms which we didn't see it addressed in this, uh, uh, in this, in this recommendations. Many of these recommendations have not been monitored by the independents as recommendation 1715s. It says clearly in the English version, uh, uh, unfortunately in the Arabic, Arabic version wasn't clear, the opposition should be engaged in this committee to monitor how they implement the recommendations. Mr. Bassouni and his team, they were highlighting on the torture issues on chapter number 12, and they were highlighting about the, I mean, about the physicians' issues and the students. The students being charged yesterday, and the physician today, they were showing that, uh, a film of 55 minutes in the, in the courts, explained very well, clearly, what happened in Salmania Medical Centers, while nobody was listening to them. The Minister of Justice, he is a part of uh, the problem in Bahrain, and he is involved in the implementation of the recommendation. All right, let's bring in Michael the Stevens, government. Ali. Let me, let me get Michael Stevens' uh, take on this uh, really fast. Michael, what do you think, how much progress do you think has made in terms of uh, the implementation of reforms, and is it enough at this point? Well, I think it's interesting to see the two different positions of uh, Mr. Aswad and Mr. Fakro. Uh, Mr. Fakro is right in saying that there were a number of implementations uh, recommended by the BICI which were carried out. Um, I think that's certainly true. I think that the uh, establishment, for example, of an independent ombudsman 
uh, separated from the Ministry of the Interior is, is a positive change and that's something that you can look at in, a, in, a, in an empirical uh, light and see that actually yes there have been changes implemented on the ground. Um, the question actually is, is that what Ali is disagreeing with here is that he feels that I think that the, the reforms have not address the concerns of his constituents and I think that's absolutely true in that if you're talking about whether the reforms are going far enough clearly they haven't um, the fact that uh, Mr. Fakro himself has already admitted that they were only partial uh, implementations of some reforms I think is quite troubling uh, I do agree with him that there were some longer term concerns um, for example you cannot just change the society overnight you cannot get rid of some sectarian issues overnight um, some economic uh, structural problems overnight but I think at the end of the day this is just a cosmetic change that is not fundamentally going to address the structural inequalities that were in the system in Bahrain before February 2011 and I think at this this point in time the government is right to point to some of the advances that it has made but I don't think that will be enough Jamal Fakhro, one point in the initial report that was published back in November was to put the high-ranking officials and security officers who were behind the killings of protesters that erupted during the, uh, during the demonstrations. It doesn't seem like that was implemented in the report. Well, well thanks for bringing... Um, first of all, uh, the voice was not clear when Mr. Lesford was talking, so I can't really comment on what he has said. But let me take this question which you have raised now. Now, uh, the, uh, this, this referred to the recommendation 1716. And as you know, the Prosecutor General have issued an order to establish that unit, where, uh, which, which is a, a, a special unit to handle these cases. And it was only established on the 27th of February 2012. Why it was established on that date? Because we, the committee, have requested an inter, inter, international independence lawyers to come to advise us on how to start and how to establish this unit. And they, uh, they, they submitted the report on the 15th of February. So the committee, the, the, the Prosecutor General, have, have issued that special unit. And until today, 121 individuals who have been working within the police have been, are, 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 are been questioned uh, at that special unit. Okay, well, it will take some time before they listen to them, they take the fact and then to issue those orders. Ali, but it is really exactly, it is exactly 20, 22 days since that unit have, have, have been established. Now to, to, to add something to what, uh, to just to, to remind you, that the head of the national security was, uh, was, was fired a few months ago and, and the head of public security was also removed from his, from his own uh, position. So Ali, was, charged, okay. so is he charged for the crime? Ali, go ahead. Ali, go ahead. Yeah, I would say, I would just raise the questions here. If they say they sent two watchmen, two watchmen clearly, and they said they were responsible for killing Mr. Ali al-Ashiri in the custody, and another five police officers, they said they were responsible for killing Karim Fakhrawi, and they said, well, who was the high rank? Who was responsible for this killing? It was a systematic, up to date, we have 78 marchers in Bahrain being killed, some of them by excessive tear gas. As the United Nations highlighted today, they have a concern about using excessive tear gas in Bahrain. That is very clear message from United Nations. Bahrain didn't implement anything from their recommendations in terms of human rights. Human rights abuses ongoing in Bahrain. A clashes is ongoing in Bahrain. There is day and night. You can see clashes in Bahrain. Your reporter in Bahrain, he could go now directly to Maksha area or Shahrakan area or wherever near to Bani Jamra and to see the clashes. The people, those two officers, to Mr. Michael, those two officers from the Britain and from the United States, to Johns, we call them. I mean, both of them, they are in Bahrain since some months now, two to three months. What is improved? At least 22 people being killed by using excessive tear gas. I, I don't right. disagree. We have at least I don't disagree with some of them. We have 100 people, Michael, they lost I their think, eyes I because of... Can I, can I come in? Can I interrupt? Can, can I just I jump may. in here? Michael, Michael, I will give you the chance to respond in just one moment. But let me put uh, the statement that was in fact made by the United Nations to Jamal Fakhro because the spokesperson for the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said that we have been receiving worrying reports of the disproportionate use of force by Bahraini security forces, including 
including the excessive use of tear gas. And then he goes on to say, Mr. Fakhro, that he, uh, we call on the government of Bahrain to investigate the alleged use of such excessive force. Why is this still happening in Bahrain? Well, it is, uh, it is two things. I mean, first of all, first of all, let me say one thing: that that the report of the of the of the human rights, uh, which was written, unfortunately, one-sided, and the government of Bahrain have responded to that clearly. And uh, in Geneva last week, or no, the, the last minister, two weeks, the minister, she was in Geneva last week. Updates. The minister of can human I, rights, I, she was in Geneva two weeks please? ago. Sure. Can I can I finish my talk? I mean, I mean, Ali, I mean, it is. I think, I think, I think Go I have ahead, respected Jamal. you, Go and ahead. I have listened to you. So I, yeah, I mean, I mean, these guys I'm need to listen. I'm willing, need to I'm listen. To listen need to, 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 to wait and. Uh, Go yeah, ahead. please, okay, you have, you have just to be no, quiet, uh, please, Ali. Yeah. So. No, sorry, sorry, Mr. Yeah, Jamal. So, I know so how I to think, be quiet. I, I know what's going on. I know how to be quiet. Sorry about that. Yes. Ali, I will come to you in a moment, and I'll also bring in Michael. But sure. uh, Jamal Fakhro, please continue your thoughts. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so clearly, uh, actions have been taken. Uh, uh, the, 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 the. Uh, I mean, earlier. Uh, there was a comment about about those prisoners on on a strike as you know we have signed an agreement with the with the with the, with the red crescent to visit the the prisons they came twice into bahrain they sent their committee and they have issued the report and they, i think the outcome of that report was was very positive uh, we are doing lots of changes within within our within our security and police sector and and i think i think uh, uh, lots of changes have been happening uh, the the uh, one thing I want just to be need to be very clear. We are here talking about a report about implementation of recommendations. Those are, now the question is: Are these recommendations being implemented or not? The answer, which is which are very detailed in the report, is that yes, they have 15 have have completely implemented and 10 are being implemented. All right. So this, this is the question. Now, there, there, I, th I, think, I think we need, just one second, I think we need to differentiate between, between two issues. Between the political reforms in Bahrain and the human rights reforms, which are the subject of the BK report. The you BK bring report up a very good point. You bring the political up, changes. You bring Sorry? up a very good point, uh, Jamal Fakhro, which I'd like to put to uh, Michael Stevens, because are these implementations, Michael, uh, that whether or not the Bahraini government is in fact implementing them, are they representative of the entire Bahrain society and what those demonstrators actually want? Well, a lot of these recommendations that came through came on the back of um, the national dialogue process of which um, Mr. Aswad's party was not part of towards the end. So in terms of some of the recommendations that the king has been uh, signing into law, uh, it doesn't represent all of the society. I think that's pretty clear. Wefaq got 60% of the vote in the last election that they participated in. For them not to be part of some kind of dialogue on, on reform and implementation is, is clearly showing that there's not a full uh, uh, representative uh, reform process going on. Having said that, I think that you know, looking at the, the security aspect, um, Mr. Aswad brought up the two Johns, Mr. Timoney and Mr. Yates. Um, the security reforms that are happening there are structural. They take time. Having said that, I do take his point. Um, only five days ago, there was a, a young uh, policeman who acted in an extremely inappropriate way, um, throwing a Molotov cocktail back at protesters, for example. Um, now, this clearly is behavior that we, we cannot accept. If we, if we are to see a movement forward, in the reform process, we cannot have Bahraini policemen acting unprofessionally in this way, particularly when the reform processes are going on. It undermines the entire process itself. And not only that, it distances the population that these police units are going into from the government itself even further than it already has happened. So I think that the problem is there is that there are some implementations in terms of the face-to-face -face reforms, which is particularly to do with security, that are alienating sectors of the population. The other problem is I think that when you go into some of these, you know, these villages, particularly Shia villages, um, Senebus, Sitra, Dumistan, uh, they've never really been engaged with the state anyway. So regardless of whether these reform processes are happening in Manama, uh, a young man in one of those villages really isn't going to see much change yet. He's still going to be angry uh, and he's not going to feel an everyday uh, um, improvement in his life. So I think that, you know, this is, this is a really serious point that we have to get to is these reforms structurally are being implemented, but the practice on the ground has to change immediately. And if it doesn't, then I think that we're going to have more problems. All right. We'll have to leave it there. But thank you to all my guests. Uh, Jamal Fakhro uh, from Bahrain, Michael Stevens in Doha, and Ali Al Aswad in London.
Thanks for joining us on this edition of Inside Story, and we thank our viewers uh, for watching. If you want to send us your feedback, you can always do so. Email your thoughts to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Goodbye for now.